Hi, I'm Cody here with Red, and this week's Ajax Tech Tip videos, we're going to be talking about proper brake fluid flushing and bleeding. Brake fluid is hygroscopic and actually draws moisture to it. And over a period of time, you can actually get exposed to the moisture. The moisture can get to the brake fluid and it loses its effectiveness. Periodically, you need to flush your brake fluid in order to restore its effectiveness. Syringes or Mighty Vacs are often used when bleeding brakes but they can be a bit of overkill on motorcycles because the systems are so small, you can actually pull air into it. I like to use a piece of hose and let gravity do the work. Before tackling the task of flushing or bleeding your brakes, make sure you have plenty of the proper brake fluid on hand. We're gonna go ahead and flush the rear brakes on this one. You wanna make sure that you don't have any dirt or anything around the cap before you remove it. You wanna take a rag and put it over here just for safety. In case any fluid drips, doesn't get on anything. And we're gonna put another one here over the front for the same purpose, just to keep any spillage or drippage off anything that matters. Does brake fluid wheel peel paint? You wanna clean that off before you reinstall it. We're gonna use just a regular aspirator. Pull that fluid out of there. I want to clean out the inside of the reservoir. Let's take some of our fresh brake fluid. Put some inside and you can use a toothbrush, an acid brush, small paintbrush, something of that nature. Just to kind of break any of the deposits and residue loose that's on the inside of the reservoir. And then we'll pull that out. Now we'll top it off. We're just going to take this bottle, put our hose in it, put the cap on just to kind of keep it in there. Put a wrench on our bleeder, make sure we have plenty range of motion so we can tighten and loosen it. Put our hose on, make sure we have a good snug fit, a good tight seal. And when you crack the bleeder loose, you don't have to go too far just enough to let the fluid go out. And then slowly work the pedal or lever if you're doing the front, and let the fluid come through. The whole time you're doing this, keep a watchful eye on the fluid level, make sure it doesn't get too low. Depending on the size of your system, you can look at at least two reservoirs worth of fluid to completely flush it. But when the fluid's nice and clean when it comes out, and you've gone through at least two, then you know you've got all the fluid flushed out. And when you do your last amount, you want to make sure you get your fluid level below the max in the reservoir so that you have room for expansion. We're going to pull our billows off our cap here and then dry it out thoroughly, make sure there is no moisture left. Now that our billows is reinstalled, make sure that there's no air pockets in it, make sure that we're still clear, fluid level is proper, and reinstall it. Now, if you just replaced a brake line or something like that, and you need to actually bleed the brakes and get some air out of the system, the process is similar. We're going to go ahead and go through that. Uh, you just need a longer hose. You want to make sure that whenever you bleed your brakes, that you don't have a high spot in your line. You can either turn your bars, rotate the master cylinder on the handlebars, or if neither one of those gets you where you want, you can simply pull the hose down and secure it with a zip tie or something of that nature around the fork leg. First thing we're going to do is put a rag around the Reservoir, and remove the cap. When you pull the cap off, you can take the, the billows or the bladder, pull it out of the cap, look on the back side of it, and you'll probably find water droplets, which can be from temperature change, washing it, or just from the effects of the brake fluid pulling moisture to it. If you're bleeding your brakes, there's no sense in running that old fluid through the system. So you can kind of do a flush and bleed at the same time. I'm going to add some fluid so that we can clean out any residual deposits that were in there from the previous fluid. We're going to take our brush again. You can use a small toothbrush, small paintbrush, anything of that nature, just to break loose any deposits that are in there. Fresh fluid will help you see it better. And then we're going to pull that out as well. You'll notice in the center of this master cylinder reservoir, there's actually a little plastic cap 
This little splash cap. What that does is keep fluid from shooting straight up in the air into your face. And also kind of keeps air trapped around the entry hole for the bore of the master cylinder. So we're going to top this back off. And we're going to go ahead, attach our hose to the bottom. We're just going to run this all the way up to above the master cylinder. Keep your reservoir topped and watch the fluid level. You can give it a couple light pops if you want on the lever. You don't need to pull it full range. If you'll notice the fluid level in the hose is slowly rising. Once this fluid level equalizes up to the master cylinder, you know you have no air in the system. And right now we can tell that there's no air bubbles traveling up. We can give it a couple little pops just to see if there's any coming up through the master cylinder. There's some, so keep letting it rise. And this does create a little bit of waste, but it also ensures that you don't end up with all of it on the floor and that you actually have a properly bled brake system. The weight of the brake fluid, just its specific gravity, weighs more than air. So as it starts to drop back down the line, you notice it's not leaking out anywhere. So it's actually pushing the air back up to the master cylinder reservoir. So that means we probably did have some trapped right here in the rise. And we can take our hose, pull it on over, just put it back into the reservoir. And the bubbles are now coming out of the splash cap, if you'll notice. Top that off. And that would be the last of our air coming out. Pull the lever back to the bar. Go ahead and tighten our bleeder. And the last little remnants of air that were trapped come out real easy at that point. You don't even have to have the bleeder cracked. Notice we're just barely pulling the lever back. It's mostly the vibration that does it. And there we have full lever. Top our level. The process of bleeding brakes is often overcomplicated. So hopefully this video can make it a little simpler for next time. Thanks for watching this episode of Ajax Tech Tips. Check back next week for our next installment.